framework for strategic planning to shape a beneficial human-centric future. Before we launch into a framework for strategic planning and adopting new technologies, innovating and embracing machine learning in our daily lives, it is important to unmask and scrutinize our assumptions. Any knowledge is the foundation for our values, behaviors and motivations. The problem is that much of our knowledge is based on assumptions. We assume our best friend did not call us back because they do not care about us, so we send a scathing text. We assume the world is flat, so we flog people who said it is round. The decisions we make are based on what we think we know. However normal it might be for humans to make assumptions and not to question what we think we know, when our premises are incorrect, our conclusions are invalid. On the other hand, we may be very well informed. We may have all the knowledge and expertise in the world on a certain topic or project. The problem here lies when we communicate it. This curse of knowledge assumes that those on the receiving end have all the context, details and certainty that we do. So we start communicating in the middle or at the end and meaninglessly drone on to lost audiences. Not only have we missed the why, the goal or the purpose, we have assumed that others have the background, knowledge and understanding that we have. So, before implementing any change, starting a new project or simply communicating, we have two tasks where the one is not to assume we have all the facts and the other is not to assume that others have the same facts and context that we do. The first task has to do with our own self-questioning, learning and in some cases unlearning. The second task has to do with communication and leadership, where leadership also involves leading people to stand on our grounds and see things clearly through the same looking glass. Both tasks share the same theme, find and share knowledge that harbors data instead of assumption and use that knowledge to inspire why you want to do something. Leadership is not a new idea. In times long lost to us, in all areas of society, leadership has formed to construct rules, maintain processes, inspire action or compliance, and make us feel as if we are a part of something. We do not always love our leaders. In fact, some would argue that we rarely do. Our bosses might create anguish. Our political leaders seem in most instances more concerned with power. Our CEO seems in many instances more focused on self-gain. Our religious leaders give us hope in exchange for money or sometimes strange and extreme ways of seeing or doing things. And even our families and communities develop informal leaders that tacitly dictate how we should be doing things. All leaders have an aim, an outcome they are trying to achieve. Well, they should. Simon Sinek dedicated his book Start With Why to uncover how no aim or outcome can successfully be achieved without first asking the right questions. These questions, always starting with the most important question, why? Why are we doing this? What is our purpose? Our vision? What motivates us to do what we are doing? If we're asking the wrong questions, getting those answers right simply does not matter. It is the role of the leader to start with why and to inspire and motivate those around them to act out of will and connection to that why not simply because of arbitrary rules, targets or KPIs. We understand that with changes as great as those that smart technology offers, there are a few seemingly more complicated things to consider. Smart technology brings utter disruption to our ways of life and through this it is met with great deal of fear. Not to mention the power in our new technologies, codes and scientific discoveries to elicit large-scale good or bad. On this, I have two things to say. Ignoring the changes is more dangerous than drinking them in, and fearing the bad makes us powerless to ensure the good. Now let us talk about why we need to change. The first step in our framework for embracing, adopting, and democratizing AI, one step at a time, but always towards the betterment of the world at large. As discussed in the previous chapter, democratizing AI fits within the proposed broader massive transformative purpose framework for humanity. The current reality is that we are stepping into an unknown future and the ability to change and adapt has never been so important to our survival. Agility has been thrown around as the trendy new word, along with words and terms like digital transformation, innovation and so on. 
The thing about these words is that while we might roll our eyes when we hear them, they are overused, without real understanding, for a reason. Our future is unknown. The pace of development, knowledge growth, technology advancement, and analysis make it so. We do know that at the core of our unknown future is smart technology. We also know that smart technology keeps getting smarter, moving faster, and fundamentally altering our lives. A groundbreaking invention or advancement could make what we think, how we think, and what we do today irrelevant tomorrow. Therefore, current business models, strategies, and roadmaps no longer work. These often rely on an amount of predictability that we just do not have. While we have more data than we have ever had before, and more ways to analyze this data than ever before, we have less certainty on what next year will be like. The bottom line is we must be prepared to change directions, stop what we are doing, and completely reinvent ourselves if we have to. We also must be prepared to do this often. Being comfortably uncomfortable is vital if we want to avoid irrelevance, non-competitiveness, and possibly business extinction. The same is true for governments who risk falling far behind the global economy, removing their countries from global dialogue, advancements, and information sharing, and not taking advantage of what the world offers to properly serve and protect their citizens. Agility, innovation, and digital transformation are some of the key action words for any business, organization, or government that aims to thrive in the smart technology era. We must be willing, prepared, and inspired to change quickly, where in the past we have steered and controlled. We must follow our data, be digitally savvy, responsive, and available for our customers, employees, or citizens, and prepare to chuck our processes, strategies, and services aside, or repurpose them based on trends, demands, advancements, and inventions. We can no longer have five-year plans that direct our futures with minimal deterrence or interruptions. We can plan for the short term and direct our vision to solving long-term problems, but must remain agile in our processes, thinking and approach. The pace of global digital transformation and innovation makes this so. In this regard, Amy Webb, a quantitative futurist and professor of strategic foresight at the New York University Stern School of Business, has said in a Harvard Business Review article, How to do strategic planning like a futurist, that deep uncertainty merits deep questions, and the answers aren't necessarily tied to a fixed date in the future. She further asks, Where do you want to have impact? What will it take to achieve success? How will the organization evolve to meet challenges on the horizon? And reckons that these are the kinds of deep foundational questions that are best addressed with long-term planning. Without this kind of thinking, we are at the risk of becoming the likes of out-of-business publishers who did not account for the internet content consumption and advertising, movie renters who did not account for the online streaming and so on, because changing their business model was not in their five-year plans. In her futurist framework for strategic planning, she recommends that we need to think about time differently. Use time cones instead of timelines that arbitrarily assign goals on a quarterly or yearly basis and look at our planning based on what is most certain to what is least certain. One can then divide the time cone up in four parts, where each section of the cone is a strategic approach that encloses the one before and starts with tactics, which is then followed by strategy, vision, and systems-level evolution. Because we have most certainty about the trends and probable events of the most immediate future, we can direct our tactics, actionable strategic outcomes, for the next year or two towards achieving related goals. After that, our strategies become less certain and cannot be formulated as tactics or plans. For the following two to five years, we focus more on priorities, shifts in the organization structure, or staffing requirements. In the more distant future, five to ten years, we have even less certainty other than the vision of what we want to achieve and where we aim to take the organization. When we reach past ten years, things are wholly uncertain. Granted, things may change drastically after the first six months, requiring a change in tactics, but after 10 years, we can assume no certainty. 
internal and external systems, trends and processes, which are all part of the system's level evolution, will evolve, fall away, be replaced and disrupted. We must think about how this uncertainty and possibility might affect us and how we can direct it. Perhaps the most important thing to note is the importance of agility. The moment there is a new invention, a new player in the industry, new technology, new trends, or new business and consumer intelligence, we need to be willing to shift, discover, and perhaps seek a completely new path. So, this might change our tactics and our vision. Amy recommends that the beginning of your cone and your tactical category is always reset to the present day and that the ideal result is a flexible organization that is positioned to continually iterate and respond to external developments. If we have a strong sense of what our industries might look like, we can address the entire cone simultaneously. By doing this, leaders are in a much better position to assess whether their more immediate tactics and strategies allow and account for the future landscape, effects of other industries, and the potential state of our own industry. Conversely, Amy warns that if leaders do not have a strong sense of how the industry must evolve to meet the challenge of new technology, market forces, regulation, and the like, then someone else will be in a position to dictate the terms of your future. We can also use this type of holistic thinking to imagine, lead, and direct the future developments and be central to systems-level evolution through our tactics and strategies. Bring your attention back to your massive transformative purpose, that vision you have of what you want to achieve for your family, business, customers, industry, citizens, and the world. If you keep focused on that, then the most important thing will always be achieving it. You become less bogged down about following strategies because they sounded good two years ago and they are now part of your key performance indicators. If new developments mean that you can achieve your MTP in a new way, or if a breakthrough discovery means you can achieve it in a way you did not consider possible before, these are now the paths you follow. The same holds for the proposed MTP for humanity and the associated MTP goals. My personal MTP of helping to shape a better future in the smart technology era fits in with the MTPs of my business ventures and non-profit organizations as well as the MTP for humanity. In order to follow the most optimal paths to achieving these MTPs and associated goals, I and we as a collective need to be as agile as possible. Now, what is left is to understand all the little pieces that will come into how we actually go about achieving transformation, innovation, and digitization. Once a business or organization has a clearly defined MTP, the focus shifts to embarking on an AI-driven digital transformation journey as described in Chapter 4. Some of the key elements of successful AI-driven digital transformation include vision or intent, data, technology, process, and people. This is not only relevant for business and organizations, but also communities, governments, as well as regional and global organizations. If you are thinking about your business or country as a futurist would, or in terms of your massive transformative purpose, you are already taking the first step. As discussed in previous chapters, AI should be a part of every company or organization strategy. It should not be regarded as another information technology project. Rather, automation and machine learning should define change, growth, products, reach, and is a strategic tool to achieve organizational vision. If we are not considering machine learning in our strategy, no matter what institution or organization we are a part of, we are already behind. Furthermore, we are ignoring efficient, innovative, and scalable solutions to our current problems. Whoever you are, think about this. If your current solutions, strategies, and plans involve using the tools that have been available to you since you are founding to stay profitable, become profitable or scale, you are in danger of becoming irrelevant and wasting inordinate amounts of money. If your solutions involve more or improved physical structures, this year's Christmas campaign, improvements to your products or services, or latest specials you do not think the public can refuse, you are in danger of becoming irrelevant. 
The things that have worked for you in the past, that even seem foolproof, do not work anymore. And if you are in the business of public service, and it is not profit you are after, achieving inclusion and development and ensuring resources and rights for your communities simply cannot happen quickly enough with the traditional methods you are used to. If they could, I imagine you would be in a quite different place today. If smart technologies such as machine learning, IoT, distributed ledger technology, automation, and robotics are not part of your strategies, you are simply ignoring some of the most powerful and scalable tools and solutions for the problems that you face. If you only see AI and any automation or technological advancements as an IT project, not only are you not seeing the full picture, but you probably have no idea how AI can change the path of your business, its impact, and maybe even the world. Misunderstandings about what AI is and is not could fuel opposition to technologies with the potential to benefit everyone. From a governmental perspective, poorly informed regulation that stifles innovation would be a tragic mistake.